Hello, future orchestrators. Welcome to another episode with Titan Node, the number one place to delegate your stake. Today, we will be talking about how to set up a live peer orchestrator and earn passive income. This tutorial is for people looking to utilize their current GPUs for video mining on the live peer network. In this video, we'll be going through a couple of topics. First, requirements. Second, installation. Third, benchmarking. And fourth, launching a live peer node. Let's get started. The first part of this video, I'd like to jump into the requirements to become a live peer orchestrator. The first thing you will need is a NVIDIA GPU. NVIDIA is the only brand of GPUs that works on the live peer network. So we have to dedicate ourselves to that brand. Next is internet bandwidth. The way we can calculate how much bandwidth we might need is each stream requires about six megabits per second up and down per stream. So if we do some simple math, our 1660 Super could do 20 streams, which would mean we would need about 120 megabits per second up and down for that one video card. Next, we also need a static IP so that when we are receiving streams from broadcasters, it is consistently going to the same location. You can try it with a dynamic IP address just to get started, but in the future, you will most likely want to upgrade. We will also need the required LPT to get in the top 100 list of orchestrators. There are currently only 100 slots available for orchestrators to join and receive work, so you will have to go to the final page on the LivePeer Explorer to see how much LivePeer you would need to get in to the active working set. You will need some Ethereum to cover gas fees. You will need some general knowledge about how networks work, such as IP addresses, firewalls, and how computers talk to each other. You will also have to have an understanding of how ETH works, and some command line experience does help. Now that we have covered the requirements, let's jump into the next part of this video, which is the installation, benchmarking, and launching of the node. In this tutorial, we will be installing LivePeer on Windows 10 Professional. Now, there are different operating systems you can install LivePeer on, such as Linux, but today we will be using Windows. Now, before we install LivePeer and get started with setting up our orchestrator node, we do need to patch our NVIDIA driver so that we can transcode unlimited concurrent streams at once. If we open up a browser and we go to the developers nvidia.com website, links are in the description below, we can check all the graphics cards that are supported for transcoding. We need to have an encoder and a decoder on the graphics card in order to do transcoding on the live peer network. And we can simply click on the drop down and view all the graphics cards that have encoding chips on them. As you can see, at the top right, the max concurrent sessions are limited or throttled by NVIDIA by default. We're allowed to have three max concurrent sessions by default. We need to override this in order to get the maximum benefit from each video card. We can navigate to a GitHub repository where we can find the patch. Again, the link is in the description. We can go ahead and start patching our graphics card. We can scroll down and start by downloading the patch tool. We can select the RAR and save that onto our desktop. The next thing we need to do is select the patch that we will be applying. We can go back to the previous page and we can scroll down to the version of the driver we have on our computer. There is a table down here with a version number. To find the version of your driver on your computer, you can simply navigate to the NVIDIA control panel. On this computer, we are running the latest version, which is 471.41. Once we have found our version, we can go ahead and save as the file patch and save it to our desktop. It is a 1337 file that we will have to locate later. We can now run the program to patch our driver. So we will close this and open up the patching program. 
you might need to download WinRAR in order to extract this, but we can just run it straight out of the application here. And now it asks us to find the 1337 file that we had previously downloaded. So we can select that. And now it's going to prompt us looking for the NVIDIA DLL file. And the way you find this file is it is on the same for every computer, every Windows. We can go ahead to this PC under C, Windows, under System32. And if you scroll right to the bottom, you will find the DLL file that we are looking for. We can go ahead and open that. And we can go ahead and click Patch. You should see this confirmation saying that the file has been patched and there should be no errors. And that concludes the patching process. All NVIDIA GPUs on this machine should now have unlimited concurrent sessions. Now we are going to download LivePeer and the LivePeer benchmarking tool. We can open our browser and we can navigate to the LivePeer GitHub repository. Again, link is in the description. We can scroll down and get the latest release of LivePeer, and we will be downloading the Windows 64-bit version. Save that to our desktop, and go ahead and unzip that package. Once we have our new folder, we can take a look inside and make sure that we have the LivePeer file and the LivePeer bench the LivePeer client, and the LivePeer router file. We are now going to download the rest of the benchmarking files. We can go back to our browser and put in the link to download the video that we can test for benchmarking. We can put that in there and download that file. We can put it in the folder that we have all of the rest of our files in for LivePeer and save that in there. And we are also going to grab a configuration file for the benchmark tool. Again, all the links are in the description below in order. Once we're at the transcoding options.json, just click the raw button and go ahead and save as. And you can put this in the folder that we originally created with our programs in it. We can minimize this. And all we want to do here is also extract these temporary files into the same location here. And we should end up with a BBB folder as well as our transcoding options JSON file. Just double check it's all in there. These are just sample videos for testing out our live streaming capabilities. Next, we will create a batch file to run the program of the benchmarking tool. This will give us an indication of if we patched our NVIDIA card correctly and how well our benchmarking can do based on the video GPUs that you have. We're going to create a new text file and we can call this one run benchmark. We will also need to change the ending of this so that it is not a TXT file. We can simply click view and add file name extensions onto the end. When you do that, we can rename this and end it with a bat. And now we have an executable file that we can now fill in with some commands. Let's edit this file. And in here we can run a number of commands that will allow us to run our benching program. First, we're gonna execute the bench program itself, which is livepeer underscore bench dot exe. Next, we can define which file we would like to transcode. So we can type dash in and execute the bbb dash source dot m3 u8. Then we can pick our transcoding options. So we're gonna pick the transcoding options that we have in our folder, which we downloaded. So we type in transcoding uh, options and we define that file as the transcoding options.json file we have in our folder. Next, we're going to define which NVIDIA GPUs we'd like to use. 
So we type in dash NVIDIA. And depending on what slot it's in, typically it's in slot zero or one or two. It depends on how many PCI slots your computer has. We can either select the particular GPU that we'd like to use, for instance, zero, or you can select all the GPUs in the device by just typing all. And lastly, we're going to define the amount of concurrent sessions that we're interested in benchmarking. So you can type in concurrent sessions. And you can put in, let's for instance, 20. Now make sure that the capitalizations and all the other flags are capitalized shown in this example. If they are wrong, the program won't run properly. Now, when this program finishes running, it's going to show the results at the end, but it will close the program unless we give it a command to pause. So we can go ahead and enter down to the next line and quickly put pause. Once we've entered all those commands, we can go ahead and save this. And go ahead and close. Now we can go ahead and run our benchmark. We have 20 concurrent sessions running on all of the GPUs in this computer, which is just one. And when we run this program, it's going to transcode each of the video segments as quickly as possible and give us the results. So let's take a look. I'm going to maximize it. And what you'll see here is that it's taking all the segments and trying to transcode them in real time. Now, when we get to the very bottom, which may take about 40 to 50 seconds, it'll give us our results. I will speed it up for the purpose of this video. Okay, so we have received our results. And as you can see down at the bottom here, we have a couple of uh, interesting metrics on how well we did. Now, the biggest metric to determine how well your GPU did is most likely this bottom one right here. This is your real-time duration ratio. If this is above one, it means you're not transcoding in real time. Same with this real-time segments ratio. We've done quite poorly right here. I would recommend that for people joining the Live Peer Network, you'd want to keep this under about 0.2. Uh, I have found that under 0.2, you're going to reach the most peak amount of performance for your GPU while not losing any segments and keeping up. So let's go ahead and run that again and reduce the amount of segments that we're trying to benchmark with. So we can close this and we can go back and edit and let's switch that to 16. We can save that and close. And let's run it again. And now we've gotten our results back and you can see that we are actually right at 0.2, which is the sweet spot of the maximum amount I would use. As you can see also, our real time segments transcoded, they were all transcoded in real time. So that is really positive and we will go with 16 sessions for the rest of this video. There is a possibility that this GPU could do a little bit more. I'm also running software for recording and screen sharing, so chances are it's using up some of the RAM in this program itself. So possibly could do 18, but today we're gonna go with 16. So let's go ahead and close that and move on to the next step. We now have to open up the firewall in Windows 10 to allow the internet to be able to connect to our node. Uh, this is when broadcasters send their live stream, they have to land at the right place and get through the firewall. So the way we do that, we can close this and in search, we can type firewall with advanced security. You'll see it here. Make sure you click on this one and we get our dialog to open up a firewall port. We can click on inbound rules and we want to create a new rule. This new rule will be opening up the port used by default for live peer. So we can click port and click next. We want to open up TCP port 8935. We can hit next. We can allow the connections hit next, allow where the rules apply, all of them, we can hit next. And just as giving it a name, we can name it 8935. 
and click next. As you can see, a rule is now here and we want to maybe create a new rule for the same thing, but for UDP. And we can go here and type it again, hit next. And again, we can call this 8935 and finish. Now we have opened up our ports to accept incoming streams from broadcasters. Let's go ahead and close this. And our next step is to launch the live peer program and start our node. But a quick word on routers before we get started. A lot of individuals might be behind a router and need to port forward on their router. This is going to be custom for every individual as each router is different and have different settings. You will have to stop this video and take some time to look into the port forwarding on your router if you have one and go ahead and forward that port 8935 and come back to the rest of this tutorial. And just as a note, some routers actually have hard-coded firewalls in them that do not allow port 8935 to be open whatsoever. So just keep that in mind if you are having trouble with forwarding ports through your router. The next thing we have to do is give our node the ability to connect to the Ethereum blockchain to submit transactions. The way we can do this is we can either download a full Ethereum blockchain node or a light node and connect it directly locally on our machine, or we can use a third party service like Infira or Alchemy to connect to their APIs. Today we're going to be using Infira uh, to connect to their APIs and launch our node. So we first need to create an Infira account. So we can go to Brave and we can go to Infira.io. We can go ahead and create an account and sign up. It'll go ahead and ask you to verify your account uh, through the email. Once you have done that, and we can go ahead and log in. Once you're in your Infura account, you can go to the Ethereum button on the left. We will create a new project. Give it a name. Click create. And with Infura, we get, I believe, 100,000 pull requests a day for free which is going to be fine for our live peer node as we usually use about 30,000 a day with a typical node. And what you're going to need is this mainnet Infira API key, which is this HTTPS version right here. Just go ahead and copy that onto your clipboard and save it for later. You can save it in a notepad or just remember how to get back here because we will need it for later. Let's go ahead and minimize this and move on to the next step. We are now at the exciting stage of launching our full node. We can go ahead and open up our folder where our program is. We are now going to create another text file called launch node. So we'll create a new document and name it launch node. Again, let's go back to the last few letters here and change that from a TXT to a bat. Once we've created our executable file, let's go ahead and edit that file. And here we can run our list of commands to launch our full node. The first command we're going to be putting in is the livepeer.exe command to launch the livepeer program. Now we will be entering number of settings and commands. These are called flags. Anything with a dash is called a flag. So the first we're going to specify which network we will be using. So we will type dash network and we will be using the mainnet network. Next, we will be determining what we are doing. There are a couple flags for whether you're an orchestrator or a transcoder or a broadcaster. This is going to be an orchestrator node. So we can type dash orchestrator. And we also want to transcode on this same machine. You can have transcoders in different locations with standalone orchestrators, but that is for a later video in this series. Today we're going to be an orchestrator and transcoding on the same machine. So we have to specify that this is a transcoder. Next, we want to set the maximum amount of sessions 
that we are available to do for work. As before with our benchmark, we determined that this computer can do 16 max sessions. So we can type in max sessions and we can put in 16. If you have multiple GPUs, you can put in more. And if you have different setups, obviously you can change your max sessions. Just be wary though, if you set more max sessions than your computer can handle, and you end up having an out of memory error, you lose all the sessions you currently have, and it's pretty hard to get back to that point again, because your performance has significantly decreased after it crashes. So just be sure not to take on more than your computer can really handle. The next, we're gonna define the ETH URL of the node we'll be connecting to. This is the URL we got from Infira. So we can type in ETH URL, and we're going to put in that Infira link we got earlier. I still have it in the browser here. I'm just gonna recopy it just in case. And we're gonna paste that in there. We can go ahead and hit space and put in our next few flags. The next flag is the price per unit that we're going to be charging. So this is the price of each pixel in way for the transcoding work we're going to be doing. So we type in dash price per unit. And right now, as of this recording, the recommended price per unit by LivePeer is between 800 and 1000 way per pixel. So we're gonna pick the bottom end of that. So we're gonna put in 800. The next we're going to be putting in the service address for this transcoder. So this is going to be your IP address followed by the port of 8935. Now, you can also put a DNS name in here, but most people will end up using their IP address to get started. So let's start off with putting dash service ADDR. And for this example, I have created a domain name that points to the IP address of this machine. Again, you're most likely going to use your own IP address, or if you have a DNS set up, with a domain, you can use that as well. Just make sure the IP points to this computer and it pings properly. So we will be using titan-node-orc.com port 8935. So as you can see, it is the IP address or domain followed by the colon and 8935 specifying the port. Make sure that you do put the port after the IP address or the domain name. It has to come out this way and will not work otherwise. Once we've entered all those commands, I do like to add pause onto the next line, just in case the program fails, it won't close on us right away without be us being able to read the error that it's giving us. So on the next line down, I like to put pause. And those are all the commands we're gonna be using for this tutorial. There are other ones like dash v6, which gives us more logs, and as well as dash monitor, which gives us some statistics on how we're doing in transcoding. That is going to be in the next video. For now, we're just going to be setting up the node and getting it listed on the orchestrator list. So that is all we need for now for the commands. Let's go ahead and save this and close it down. Now we are ready to launch the orchestrator node. We can go ahead and double click on the file we just created called launch node. And if we maximize this, we can see that the program is successfully running with all of our commands. It is connected to the main net of the Ethereum blockchain, and it is already creating a new account for us as it's trying to ask for a passphrase right now. So we can go ahead and enter a passphrase that we will choose. When we enter the passphrase, it will not show up in the dialog box, so it is hidden. So I will type that in now. It will ask us again to repeat the passphrase. And you can see it has now generated a new Ethereum account ending in 640. It's now asking us to log into the account that it had just created for us. So again, let's enter that passphrase we put in. As you can see, it is now caught up with the rest of the blockchain by downloading all the blocks up to date. And at the bottom it says it's done backfilling. Now there are a couple of important things to watch out for just to make sure our node has launched correctly. 
The first thing is generating the cert for the address. Next, it's gonna be listening for the ping request on the port that we specified, so the 8935. And the last thing that we should see to make sure that we've successfully set it up is this received ping request. If you do not have a received ping request line at the bottom, it means that it was unable to ping this computer with the open port. So your port may be closed or it is just not communicating correctly, in which case it'll probably give you an error and attempt to shut down the program. Once you see this receive ping request, congratulations, your node is now live and ready to interact with the live peer protocol. And one last thing before we leave this page for Windows users, as you can see, we can actually drag and drop and highlight things on the page. This is called quick edit and it actually causes the program to hang or stop, which means your transcoding will stop in general. So just for Windows users, what we wanna do is we wanna go up to the top left, select properties, and we wanna turn quick edit mode off. In fact, I like to turn all the edit options off. This will prevent your node from ever pausing because you ever entered something or adjusted it. When we hit okay, we can no longer select things and that the program will continuously run without ever shutting off. We can go ahead and minimize this for now and move on to launching our live peer client. Our live peer client is the way we interact with our node. Right now our node is running and we don't actually have any control in it because while the program is running, you cannot type anything. The way we interact with our node is by using the live peer client, which is this live peer underscore CLI. So go ahead and double click the program and let's open it up. If we scroll up, you will see that this is the tool used to communicate with our node. There's node statistics here and a lot of information. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and look at the orchestrator stats. Currently, our status is not registered and our active status is also false. This is because we are not in the top 100 live peer orchestrators yet, and we have not attempted to activate our orchestrator. So we have our account, but now we need to add ourselves to the top 100 list. The way we do this is we need to first fund our account with some LPT tokens and some Ethereum for gas. As you can see, we have our ETH account here. Don't worry about these other accounts for now, like the controller address or the live peer token address. We just need to focus on our ETH account. To check how much we currently need to get into the top 100 list, we can simply open up the Explorer, which is explore.livepeer.org. We can scroll to the bottom and go to the last page of the orchestrators. Currently, we need more than 5.7 LPT in order to get into the top 100 list. So we are going to send more than that amount to this orchestrator so that we can get started. I have finished sending LPT and Ethereum to this address, and we can go ahead and open back up our client here. If you already have it running from a previous instance, we can simply go down to the commands here, and the command for number one is get node status. This can update us on our current node statistics. So go ahead and press one and enter. And you can see now, if we scroll up just a little bit, we now have 7.2 LPT, as well as an ETH balance in order to cover some gas fees. We can now go ahead and register this orchestrator with the Live Peer Network. The way we do that is we scroll down to the bottom and the command we'll be using for this one is number 12 called invoke multi-step quote become an orchestrator. So let's go ahead and enter 12 and press enter. You can see that our current token balance is there as well as our current bonded amount is zero. We have zero bonded. The first question it's gonna ask us is what do we want to set our reward cut? The current is zero, so I'm gonna stick with zero for today. Also, if you need help understanding the reward cut and fee cut, you can watch the Ultimate Live Peer Staking Guide by Titan Node, which might help you answer some of those questions. And it also asks us what our fee cut will be. The current is 100 and the default is 95. I'm gonna stick with the current 100 for this example. 
Now it asks us to enter the amount of pixels that make up a single unit. Currently, and by default, it is one pixel. So we can just go ahead with one, which makes up one unit that we charge. And it asks us for that one pixel, how much weigh do we charge? It doesn't give us a default, but right now the recommended price is 800. So we will go with 800. It now asks for your public IP address and the port that we will be receiving streams from. In this example, we will be using the titannodeorc.com domain followed by the port. And you can enter your IP address and the port again, or if you have a domain set up, you can enter that here. This is what gets submitted to the blockchain and is logged online for public broadcasters to reach you. And it says you must bond to yourself in order to become an orchestrator. Enter your bond amount. Now, keep in mind that the bonding is done in ULPT. And if you look at our current token balance, you can see there is a lot of zeros following the 7.2 LPT we actually have. If you only enter the 7.2 LPT, you're actually only entering the ULPT. So we need to add the 18 decimal points after the 7.2 that we're going to put in. So for 7.2 live peer, it's actually going to be the current token balance shown above. We can hit enter. And now it's going to stay here for a while while it submits it to the blockchain. If we head over to our node that is currently running, you can see that the transaction is actually being sent through our orchestrator node. This is the evoke transaction to approve and it's going to run through a number of transactions on the blockchain to evoke your new orchestrator. We will come back once this is finished. Once those transactions have successfully completed on the blockchain, we can go back to our live peer client and we can confirm that the orchestrator is now live and running. Now this is Titan node two, and I'm just showing an example of what it looks like once you have your orchestrator registered. Your status should be registered and your active status should be true. Keep in mind, however, you do have to wait for a full round to complete for you to get your orchestrator registered. So you may have to wait up to 24 hours to get the registered and true status. It should also display your service URI as well as all the other metrics that you had put in before. And congratulations, you are now a live peer orchestrator receiving transcoding work. Just to confirm that your transactions have gone through successfully, you can also look up on Etherscan the three following transactions that should show that you have approved, bonded with Hint, and as well set your service URI. If you have those three completed, then you are ready to receive work. This concludes the first video in this video series. In the next video, we will be covering how to set up Prometheus and Grafana to further track the statistics of how your transcoder is doing, and in future videos, more tutorials on how to set up and optimize your node. If you have any questions or need help setting up your node, the best resource is the Live Peer Discord channel, where the community can help you answer any questions you might have. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support Titan Node, you can go to titan-node.com slash delegate to stake your tokens with Titan node. You earn Ethereum and live peer from delegating to the Titan node orchestrator. Thank you for watching and have a great day.